We are just about set for tip-off in this Division Three championship between GET and Brilliant. Hey, take it away, guys, at the court, si uh, court side. We'll send it down to Scott Embrick and John Nadelkoff. Hey, thanks a lot, Jake. We think we have a very intriguing matchup here in a Division Three title game. One of these two schools is going to walk away with their first gold ball. John, let's talk about GET first. Very impressive in their win over Marshall. A very tight game yesterday. One of the best games of the tournament. 55-53 winners over Marshall was GET. They come in as a top-ranked team in the state at the end of the regular season, and they had a trio of players who really came up huge for them yesterday. The big three really persevered through a little cold shooting in the beginning, but as the game went along, they kept attacking. They kept using the dribble drive, finding quick isolations which today is going to be a big thing because of the lockdown defense of Brilliant. Let's check out our Menards points of the game for the Red Hawks. Riley Bamanick is the team's leading scorer. Here's what they did yesterday against Marshall. Bamanick with the double-double. Wagner had 17 points, the top three-point shooter on the squad. Chris Johnson was a force inside. Most improved player. He really showed it yesterday. On the other side, Brilliant coming off a very impressive 29-point win over Lodi. 59-30 was the final there. They got off to the quick start, and thanks to those three players, Ryan Reinke, Blake Klesik, and Mike Van Feel, they were able to sustain throughout the game. Again, tacking that 1-3-1 pressure, trying to get it to the tip. Brilliant coming in here. Contrasting styles, though. They like to get up in your face. GET, they take a different approach, don't they? That 1-3-1 creates spaces, but it's kind of a disguise. It's there, then it's not. And Brilliant's got to attack it, but that's what they do well. They like to get to the paint and draw it from there, but again, it'll be a good challenge. Brilliant led by head coach Peter Kittle, bringing his team down here for the second time in school history, second time in the last three years. GET led by head coach Mark Wagner in his ninth year at GET. GET down here for the fifth time in school history. Both teams chasing their first state title. The stage is set for our Division Three championship. It's coming to you live on your WIA network station from right here at the Kohl Center in Madison. Now a message from our statewide sponsors. This is your WIAA network station. When you buy Wisconsin dairy products, your hard-earned dollar brings you more than just the quality and great taste you know and love. It supports the dairy industry, which in turn reinvests that money back into your community, resulting in better public services, abundant recreation opportunities, and a beautiful place to call home. In all, dairy contributes $26.5 billion to Wisconsin's economy and eventually comes back to benefit you. To learn more, visit youtube.com slash dairyimpactwisconsin. If you want someone who understands Wisconsin farmers, find someone who speaks your language. We're fluent in farm. Rural Mutual Insurance is Wisconsin's largest farm insurer. Our 150 local agents offer farm families the best advice and fast claim service. Since Rural Mutual Insurance only does business in Wisconsin, premiums paid here stay here to keep Wisconsin strong. RuralINS.com shows how our farm policy offers comprehensive coverage for your home and farm. Welcome to the WIAA Division III State Championship Basketball Game between the Gale Ettrick Trempolo Red Hawks and the Brilliant Lions. Let's meet today's starting lineups beginning with the Gale Ettrick Trempolo Red Hawks. At guard, a 6'2 junior, number one, Tim Wagner. At guard, a 6'4 senior, number five, Riley Bambinick. At guard, a 5'9 senior, number 11, Mitch Dorr. At forward, a 6'2 senior, number 22, Kevin Lakey. 
And then forward, a 6'5", senior number 42, Chris Johnson. And the head coach of the Red Hawks is Mark, Mark Wagner. And now let's meet the starting lineups for the Brilliant Lions. At guard, a 5'8 junior, number two, Eric Kittle. At guard, a 5'10 senior, number 20, Trevor Krzneski. At forward, a 6'1 senior, number 33, Blake Klesig. At forward, a 6'4 senior, number 41, Ryan Reinke. And at center, a 6'3 senior, number 45, Mike Van Thiel. The head coach of the Lions is Peter Kittle. Referees assigned to today's game are Cole Posse from Lacrosse, Ryan DeLong from Holman, and Charlie Ely from West Salem. Here are the starting lineups brought to you by Delta Dental of Wisconsin Experience. The Delta Dental difference for GET, four seniors and sharp shooting junior Tim Wagner. A lot of experience in that starting lineup. For Brilliant, speaking of experience, they have plenty of experience as well. Four players on this year's team made it to the state tournament on Brilliant's team two years ago. Experience versus experience, a lot of senior leadership out there, John. Just that lineage, that, that, that tradition just keeps falling down the line. And a lot of red and white out there too. GET's wearing their road red uniforms, they're in the dark, brilliant in the white uniforms. Chris Johnson posting up outside. Good rotation on the defense. Plessig came up with the steal. Now brilliant with their first possession. In punch gaps, get it up the side, try to flatten out that 1-3-1. One, don't fall in love with that three ball. Brilliant swinging around the perimeter quickly. Krzneski finding Kittle. Then probing gaps, looking short corner, high post. There's a nice high low, but couldn't get it to go. Excellent execution, just didn't get the front. And Field couldn't quite get the touch. Now here comes GT with Riley Bamanick. He runs the show for the Red Hawks. This is Tim Wagner. Came up huge against Marshall yesterday. Bamanick fading away. Rebounded by Brilliant. Like the action of getting Bamanick in the post. Maybe an ISO, maybe an advantage. Quickly in the corner. Three ball on the way. Chris Nesky. Long rebound coming out. Still tapped around and battled for. And it stays with Brilliant. Again, GT's basically, sometimes it's not about getting steals or deflections, it's about speeding you up, taking a shot on one or two passes. There's a lob inside, and a basket right away, it's Blake Klesig. Good recognition with the head turned by the inbounder. First points of the game come courtesy of the Lions. Getting a lot of dribble drive by GT. Three ball on the way by Dorr. Just how you draw it up in the offense. The Memphis O's drive, kick, find a way of getting the three ball. You'll see a lot of three-pointers from GET. They average 24 attempts a game. Now low band field, getting it off, off the glass and good is Reinke. Excellent shot, short corner touch, back to the high post and a good finish. Bamanek to the basket, a lot of contact, no call, and ripping it out of there is Plessig, and then a foul in the backcourt. Thing with Brilliant's defense, they play so hard on the ball. It's uno on uno. You're going to beat me. Good for you. If you can't, you got a challenge. You're not going to see a lot of help. So maybe there'll be some ISO challenges for GT today. Riley Bamanek picking up an early foul. Brilliant held low to Idaho. Season low, 30 points yesterday. And you get an idea how good their defense is. Again, playing passing lanes, kind of lulling the offense to sleep on maybe a lazy pass. Kittle in the corner, and they drop it down low. Touch the paint, kick it out. Kittle, that's a three! Excellent execution, just the way you're supposed to break down his zone. Touch the paint, work from inside out. Kittle, an outstanding three-point shooter in his own right, 41% on the season. 
Maxim Wagner bringing it across. And as you can see, not a lot of help D. It's right on the ball. Trust, trust the guy that's guarding the ball and just stay on your man. Lakey in the corner. Looking for Cutter, probes the lane. Floats one up there. Couldn't get the roll. Knocked free and here comes Brilliant. Brilliant's very efficient in transition. They're opportunistic. It's not a blitz. See what they got. Lanky kicking it back out to Kittle. He's swinging around. Nice probing of the defense. Punching gaps. Three ball on the way by Kuzneski. Rattles in and out. Johnson clears the rebound. Good look on three reversals. Brilliant with the early four point lead. Now Wagner. Wagner fading away, and Wagner gets the roll. Tough man to guard. He put it on the deck yesterday. He's noted for his cold-blooded shooting on the three-point shot, but he's putting it on the deck. Makes it very difficult to guard. Showing off his versatility. He had 17 points in that win over Marshall yesterday. A little bit more flattened out. Open inside. Van Thiel. Excellent reaction at the high post. Square up. See what's underneath you. Found the shooter. Brilliant. Back up by four. Tell you what, they got off to a fast start yesterday against Lodi. It was 15 to three after the first quarter. Now Babinick forcing the issue and a foul. Then you may see more and more in that because there's not a lot of help side D. They trust their defense on the ball. Falls Babinick on the may have some challenges, but at the same time might have some open looks in the lane. On the free throw line, Riley Babinick headed to Division two. two Winona State next year where he'll play collegiately. Coach Wagner said he was really excited to get Bamanek down here on the uh, state tournament floor. He feels like he's one of the most underrated players in the state. You tell from the joy, he was just so happy about his teammates, how they perform. Yesterday, he didn't really shoot it well, but that's his game. It's not one thing. He came back with 10 rebounds, four or five assists. That's a true player when he can balance off of cold shooting night. Babinick two out of two, substitutions. Blake Lauren for the first time for GET and Jordan Mephibi for Brilliant. In a little two, three extended, just to give a different look. We saw this adjustment yesterday against Marshall. Lessig kicking it around. Krzneski almost traveled with it, but got it away just in time. Good ball reversal, touch the paint. Steal. Wagner. A chance to tie or maybe take the lead for GET. And a foul on Riley Bamanek, and that's two fouls on him right away at the 321 mark in the first quarter. Again, a lot of climbing up ball pressure. Trust in the guy that's guarding the ball. Stay on your man. Uno on Uno trying to get a challenge there. Well, right now, Bamanek will stay in the game, but uh, you know what? The wheels are churning for Coach Mark <laughs> Wagner with those two fouls on his star player. He might be able to hide him in his zone a little bit better than he would in a man. Traveling. Another turnover for Brilliant. Two turnovers for each team. Early going, first quarter. Again, Brilliant's defense is nothing fancy, nothing sophisticated. It's just you, you and the ball. Wagner driving to the basket. Another offensive foul. This one's on Wagner. Good, good step in and help and recover situation. Just a little out of control on the, on the cut. Eric Kittle stepping in there, taking the charge. We have a timeout here at the Cole Center. A fast start to this one. Brilliant leads by two. Here's a message from our statewide sponsors. This is your WIAA Network Station. We live in a place where freedom of speech is our right. Giving someone a platform to speak ensures their ability to exercise that right. By standing up for educators, advocating for programs like foreign language, WEAC speaks for me and my students. Add your voice to the conversation at Speak Out Wisconsin on Facebook. Save big money during the Menards March Madness Sale. Add elegance and quality to your cabinet hardware with Hickory. With over 1,400 knobs and pulls and nine finishes, you're sure to find a perfect design. All 15% off. Light up your home in style with Patria Lighting. The Grenadier Collection has an oil-rubbed bronze finish and white linen glass. The semi-flush ceiling light is $29. The nine-light chandelier is $119. Save big money at Menards. 
The 2012 WIA Tournament is brought to you by Marshfield Clinic, encouraging you to live an active, healthy life. Marshfield Clinic, don't just live, shine. Turnover's an issue early on here yesterday. GET had just six the entire game against Marshall. They have three already, five minutes into this one. Again, that ball pressure really tends to speed you up. You, you get tunnel vision, when Scott, when you get that type of ball pressure. You just got to slow down, come to, come to a couple jump stops, and get another option or two off the dribble. Now GET with some token pressure here. Drilling with the ball, leading by two. Getting back to that 2-3 extended. It's not a 2-3 just like you might, might see in the regular season. Make it a little more pressure on the outside. Getting attacking, you still want to touch the paint. Look down to the low post or go low post to high. Three-pointer on the way, it's good by Kittle. A fast start for Eric Kittle, his second three ball of the game. Excellent ball reversal, ball touched inside, went outside, flattened out the deep. Now Wagner brings it across for GET, Red Hawks down five. One way to relieve ball pressures, ball screens at the high post. Kavanick in the corner, now Wagner. In and out, and another rebound by Brilliant, nearly stolen by Dorr. Good look though. He can keep probing gaps, come to jump stops. Poked away by Lara, who's going to chase it down? Great effort by Lara, but Klesic comes up with it. And you got to protect the rim on the 50-50 challenge. Rotating guys from top down below, sinking into the paint. Nice reversal. In the corner, Klesic for three. Another one down the hatch for the Lions. And a timeout for Mark Wagner and the Red Hawks. A full timeout. With 1.31 to go in the first quarter, Brilliant leading this one 15 to seven. And they're starting out hot, especially from three point range where they've hit three of their first five. Just getting excellent ball reversal, touching the paint. Everybody's touching the ball and makes it very frustrating for the defense. Again, after another touch of paint, reversal to the corner. People spotting up, in rhythm, knocking it down. And Brilliant has already passed its mark in three-point shooting yesterday. Of course, yesterday they didn't have to shoot a lot of threes, but today already three out of five. They got some terrific three-point shooters. Kittle at 41%, Reinke at 50%, and Plessig, who you just saw, at 41% on the season. All good percentages for three-point shots. Yesterday they got it to the 10. They were very effective around the paint. Today, ball movement, but they're still touching the paint. Just a different way of going about it inside out, but the other guys are spotting up and knocking them down. Oh, brilliant coming in here. Champions of the Olympian Conference ended up in a first place tie with Wrightstown, who they then went on to beat in the sectional semifinal. Again, GT would be handling some ball pressure full court here. Uh, might see some high ball screens with a little action on the weak side, but again, looking for that, that challenge possibly where there's an advantage or a mismatch, maybe in the low post for GT. Looking for a high screen from Johnson, goes the other way instead. Good cover up in the low post D. Babinick double team, kicks it out to Dory, hit one earlier. This one is short, and Brilliant comes up with it. Brilliant does a very good job, especially from yesterday, how they secure balls in traffic. Prisneski. Testing that 1-3-1 one, one by GET, and now Mathibi out on top. It's nice to have two coaches' sons out there probing the D and being that IQ on the floor. Now Kittle trying the baseline. Throws up an air ball, hooked out of bounds, and it'll stay with Brilliant. Oh, now the referees will get together. They'll discuss. And they change their mind. It'll be GET basketball. Good cooperation between the three. Yep, they, all three of them got together and decided, hey, did you see this? I think I saw that, and they finally came to a conclusion. I think that's why they got three referees now instead of two to kind of break the tie, right? I tell you, though, there's about 16,000 here with more eyes, so they all have their opinion. <laughs> High ball screen to relieve pressure. Pick and pop series possible. 
Three from the corner from Marcus Wynn, who's just checked in. It drew nothing, but it goes out of bounds off Brilliant. Marcus Wynn wears number 23 for the Red Hawks. Just checked into the ball game. Might be looking to get Bamanek in the post, ducking in. Johnson looking for him. Couldn't pull the trigger. Now Dorr drives. Kicks good, it out to Wagner. Good driving kick. Good patience at the same time. Dorr had the three, but decided against it. Final 10 seconds of the first quarter. Babinick fading away. Johnson in battling for the rebound, and Kittle comes out of there with it. Let's see if the Lions can get off a shot here in the final seconds. Kittle left open. Oh, but a terrific first quarter for Brilli, and they lead this one by eight. Here's a message from your local station. This is your WIAA network station. This WIAA game summary is brought to you by Skyward, creator of Skyward School Management System and Skyward Family Access, the best solution for Wisconsin school districts and parents. Coach, what jumps out at you there? I tell you, just brilliant, so balanced about touching the paint, finishing around the bucket, but outside, at the same time, they're kicking it out and finding the open three. GT's got a little bit, little bit more patient, don't get sped up, and the turnovers have taken them out in the first part of the court, but they're getting a little bit more balance as the game's gone on. We talked about Brilliant's fast start yesterday against Lodi. They have now outscored their opponents here in the two games, 30 to 10 in the first quarter. Kittle, no. Rebound inside. And if that's on Babinick, that'll be three. Again, both, both players going at it hard, going at it high on the rim. Just came across the body of the opposing player. Three fouls on Riley Bamanek, 12 seconds into the second quarter. Bamanek, the team's leading scorer. And rebounder. And assist player. And steals. Double screen, circle, circle, Duke type action. And then a foul inside. That one's going to be on Johnson. Another good recognition by the inbound passer. Seeing the third option. Doesn't happen too often, but a great recognition. At the line, Ryan Reinke. Averaging 11.1 a game. Had a terrific game against Lodi yesterday where he poured in 15. Got great hands. Every time the ball was even near him, he just clamped on it, and it was his for the rest of the possession. Misses both, and Babinick still in the game with those three fouls. Comes down with the rebound. Again, keeping the post open. Marcus Wynn open for three. Good look. Oh, and a body's hitting the deck. Johnson and Van Thiel hit the deck hard, and Coach Wagner not happy at all on the GT bench. Again, going back to the 1-3-1 look, another adjustment. So Brilliant doesn't get so comfortable in their offensive sets or offensive continuity against the zone. Good hand deflection. Pressing in the corner. Now they dump it down low. Reinke with a fadeaway. Rebounded by Wynn. Type of shot the zone wants you to shoot. Good touch of the paint. Johnson kicking it out. Door a three. Door set that up with the post feed. Then in return, he got the kick out and made him pay. We'll see if that loosens the bolts a little bit on the rim for GET. Door with a pair of three pointers in this one. Nice high post entry. 
Nice touch on the mid-range jumper by Chris Neski. Nice shot, big shot, drive. Fundamental play from the beginning. Kittle applying the pressure on Wagner. Knocked out of bounds by Klesik. Little run and jump look. Here's another look at Mitch Doerr firing up his second three-pointer of the game. Again, made the, cut, made the defender come down and raid. And we recognize it, and the result is none but three. But the answer on the other end came from Krzneski. Like oh. the jump stop here. Wagner. Scott, the previous one, he charged into him. This time he adjusted, come to a jump stop, and just rose up and knocked it down. Poked away by Johnson. Scooped up by Wynn. Turnover brilliant. Using the link to their advantage. Now Johnson has yet to score. And this one will be called on Brilliant. Well, Mike Van Field whistled for the foul. Field team Second team foul on Brilliant. Good catch and rip by Johnson, recognizing the baseline was open. By the way, closed captioning of this WIAA tournament broadcast is brought to you by your local WIAA network station. We have some floor maintenance, some perspiration in the lane. We've seen a lot of guys hit the deck here early on. This is it. No more playing after this game. Might see Wagner coming out of bounds off a squeeze pick, bringing him to the top. And for a lot of these kids, their last high school game of their career. Goes fast. Wagner for three. Excellent box out by Kiddo. He had door on his hip and comes down with the rebound. Only five feet eight inches. Kittle averages four rebounds a game. Out of bounds. GET basketball. I believe the one three one back to a two three now back to one three one is kind of slowed Brilliant's process down. It slowed them to a point where they have to make adjustments themselves, which they will. Wagner bringing it across with Krzneski on him. Again, keeping the post open on the weak side. Johnson sets a pick for Door. Now win. Good action on the weak side. And a reach-in foul. That one's going to be whistled on Klesig. Again, Brilliant's defense, even on the weak side, they're climbing up into. They're not giving you much room to, to have. Not much airspace whatsoever. Mathibi back in the lineup now for Brilliant. Plessig will have a seat. Running Stegos out the bottom. That three by Wagner's just off the mark and Kittle with another rebound. Now seeing GT extend the one through one possibly a little. It doesn't seem like much, but instead of picking up at the top of the D, a little closer to half court. In the corner, Mathibi looking for a cutter. Now they swing it around. Chris Neski. Good reversal. Touch that post. Touch the short corner. Break him down from there. Kittle had it poked out of bounds. I beg your pardon. Mathibi poked out of bounds by Door. Under five minutes to go, second quarter of action, Division Three Championship. Sheboygan Area Lutheran and Whitefish Bay Dominican have already claimed the state titles. Oh, excellent save by Mathibi. Now low, poked away, nearly stolen, out of bounds. It goes to Brilliant. Some excellent quick hands de excellent defense with the hands outside the body. Even though he got the penetration, got to the gap, the hands were still out there. Kittle has already hit a couple, almost got another. And Babinick with a rebound. And they'll want to get it up to the corners, spread the defense, flatten them out a little bit. Babinick with those three fouls. Oh, he almost picked up a fourth, and then he nailed the jumper. Created a little space. Made him pay, took advantage of the opportunity. Back to a three-point game. Again, really side and one side with the 1-3-1. Here's a three by Krzneski. And Babinick clears another rebound. Staying aggressive with those three fouls. Pushes it up ahead to Wagner. Getting a pick from Johnson. And a foul on Brilliant. 
Putting a little pressure on Burns. Here's another look at Riley Bamanek. An aggressive move for a guy with three fouls. Again, creating a little space, but at the same time, went straight up, straight down, knocked it down. Curling Bamanek in to try to get him in the post. GT on a little bit of a run here. Bamanek trying to add to it. Can't get the roll. And another big rebound from Reinke. And punch those gaps, get a couple skips, flatten out that defense. Pressing Krasneski thought about it. In the corner, Reinke with a soft touch on the baseline. Good short corner action. That time he didn't fade away. He went up strong, just like in the backyard. And the Lions entering that 7-2 run. Extending that lead back to five as we approach the three-minute mark here in the second quarter. Nice slip on the ball screen. Johnson. Couldn't get the roll. Another rebound for Brilliant. Lessig comes out of there with it. And now Krasneski. Like how Brilliant just pushes the ball up the floor with a purpose. Not out of control, but puts a little pressure to get back. Lessig, a three. Kittle with another rebound. And Wagner has it. Creighton will split the post action. Wagner down low to Johnson. And a foul from behind. That one's going to be on Reinke. Again, persevered even off the first miss. Fouled his miss. Gets the foul. Calls on Williams, and we have a timeout on the floor. 2.29 to go, second quarter. Brilliant by five. Here's a message from our statewide sponsors. This is your WIAA Network Station. When you were a teen, a driver's license meant one thing, freedom. But to your parents, it meant the stress of finding and paying for auto insurance. Today, it's easy with Rural Mutual Insurance. We get teens. Our town and country auto policy offers young operator rates, claims-free discounts, deductible forgiveness, and multi-policy discounts of up to 25%. Since Rural Mutual Insurance only does business in Wisconsin, premiums paid here stay here to keep Wisconsin strong. Contact us at RuralINS.com. Skyward is critically important to the functioning of our and operation of our school district. It provides us with the software and technology for student software, for financial software, for personnel software. A community values its school system when it sees that it can provide great services to its kids. Skyward provides that access. So the community itself is grateful to Skyward and the district for its partnership because it gives them greater confidence in their school district. Unauthorized use or rebroadcast of this program and live internet stream without the express written consent of Quincy Newspapers Incorporated, Wisconsin Broadcast Division, is strictly prohibited and a violation of U.S. copyright law. If you violate that copyright law, that Red Hawk will come get you. <laughs> I like what GT's doing. They persevered through a slow start. Knocked out of bounds by win of GT after the Bamanek miss. Again, a good look. Just not going down, but keep attacking. So now Brilliant, they led by as much as eight. Lead by five right now. A little bit more ball pressure when the ball's up the side. Harder entry to the short corner. Plessig threw it away. Intended his pass for Reinke, out of bounds to GET. Little adjustments, just how you attack the ball, how you play away from the ball. Uh, credit to the coaching staff for making that subtle adjustment. Five turnovers now for Brilliant. As you get a look at Peter Kittle, the head coach of the Lions. Pick and pop series with Wagner. Wagner to the lane. Almost got another foul, and he hit the deck hard, and he is still down. Here's another look at it. Again, taking it hard, trying to get a foul. Looks like he came down right on his right elbow. So Babinick down for GET, and the Red Hawks down five points as Coach Wagner and the training staff come over to check him out. As 
father, Mark Babinick, assistant coach for GT right next to him. And he is holding his elbow. Scott, it's really amazing how he's played with three fouls so long um, to weather the storm. It takes a, a strong IQ to do that. Otherwise, usually you're setting yourself up for the last and fourth. And now the training staff will take a look at him, and now GET needs to continue to weather the storm without one of their top players. And I think you'll see Wagner at the point running the helm. Key stretch here in this game with just under two minutes to go in the first half. Then stay poised. Keep working at it. As you can see, Wagner at the top, working from him. Let's see if this opens up some more opportunity for Chris Johnson inside. Wagner can't get it to go. Lakey with the rebound out of bounds. And it stays with GET. And you look at Riley Babinick wiping off some blood on his elbow. Little screen for the screener coming to the top. Here's a seal. Krzyzewski picked Wagner's pocket, and now the ball loose again, and Krzyzewski has it. A 50-50 toughness of Brilliant showing up. The Phoebe poked away out of bounds. It'll stay with Brilliant. Well, the 2012 WIAA tournament is brought to you by the Wisconsin Education Association Council. Support your public schools and your teachers. Join the conversation on Facebook slash Speak Out Wisconsin. We act moving education forward. Without Bamanek in there, they're going back to a 2-3. Bamanek going to the scorer's table as Brilliant works this Red Hawk defense. Kittle along the baseline, beautiful pass, poked out of there by Wagner. Van Thiel in trouble, swarmed by Red Hawks. Jump ball situation, possession arrow points towards GET. 50-50 going away of GET. Get another possession, prevent another shot from the opposing team. Babinick back in the lineup now for GT with those three fouls and that bandage on his right elbow. We'll see how it affects his play or if maybe if it even affects his shot. Going really pick it, pick, picking up the intensity, climbing into you more and more on the ball especially. Now Lakey with it, under a minute to go. First half of action. Offense been tough to come by for GT. Backdoor cut, Babinick, a little short on that one. And look at that, out battling for the rebound. Mathibi and Johnson, Mathibi winning that battle. And it goes over to Brilliant. Good adjustment though by GT. Nice backdoor cut, just couldn't get the finish. We're seeing a lot of one and done for GT on the offensive and Brilliant really doing the job on the glass. They did a good job on the glass yesterday, but it's their guards that are really hitting the boards on both ends as well. And now with under 40 seconds to go in the first half and with those three fouls, Babinick has a seat. Nice high post flash. Still being aggressive. Probably coming down to one shot now. Here is that shot from Mephibi. Loose on the floor, Lara comes up with it. As Reinke hit the deck in the corner. Now Lara with 10 and a foul. Physical ball game. And you got guys climbing up into a 1-3-1, or in this case a man-to-man. -man. Definitely out of pressure out there. Eric Kittle gets whistled for the foul. Six team fouls now on Brilliant. Neither team in the bonus situation. And with 9.5 to go in the half, Bamanek back in for a final offensive set. A lot of time just to get it in, then come off the ball screen or run a 1-4 flat, clear the lane. Doesn't have to come off the initial pass. Tanner Banky into the lineup now for Brilliant to play these final seconds. Now Bamanek around the top. And a foul, a little too much body. I'm a Phoebe, and now we have a one-on-one -on -one situation, so Babinick will head to the free throw line. Great way to end the quarter. Settle yourself down, settle the team down. Get one or two free throws here. Go in, and you persevere through the storm. You see what Babinick did yesterday against Marshall, posting a double-double. Bonus situation here. Long rebound coming out to Mephibi. They lob it up ahead. Kuzneski gets it off in time. No good. 
A low scoring first half of action in our Division Three Championship. It's brilliant leading 19 to 14. Here's a message from your local station. This is your WIAA Network Station. Scott Emmerich and John Nedelkoff back court side at the Kohl Center halftime of our Division Three Championship. You're getting a look at the brilliant dance team. And right now, keep in mind, GET came into this one averaging 68 points a game. So when you look at the score, 1914, this is played at Brilliant's uh, kind of tempo, isn't it? That ball pressure and that climbing up into it, daring to attack the rim is, is like you said, Brilliant's presence. But at the same time, GT really did a nice job persevering through Bamanek's injury, hung in there, and they're only a couple possessions down. Yeah, it's a five-point game, and the way GT can shoot threes and the way their offense can be explosive, this is they're hardly out of this. But uh, Brilliant dominating the boards and getting the better of the physical matchup. Would you agree? Oh, without a doubt, they're winning more of the 50-50 balls or getting the ball around the rim. But at the same time, GT is doing a very good job of staying patient. They just got to do a few things, come to a few jump stops in the lane. That and maybe touch the paint a little bit more to Johnson because he did such a good job yesterday. Hey, Johnson hasn't scored yet today. Well, we'll set the stage for the second half for you in a little bit. But right now for your halftime entertainment, here's Jake Zimmerman. Okay, guys, thank you very much. An exciting game. As you said, a low-scoring game is still an exciting one in this Division Three state championship. Well, you know, when most prep athletes graduate from high school, well, that's it. Their on-the-field career is basically over. But as Dustin Lukey from WXOW-TV reports, two brothers have found a unique way to stay connected to the sport they love and with each other. When making a split-second call, referees often like to get a second opinion. For Zach and James Knutson, twin brothers both refing WIAA varsity hockey, they have it built in. Call it a twin thing. I guess it's, it does carry over to refing because I do know where he is all the time. And he knows where I am, so if he ever needs to cover me or I need to cover him, we we'll always seem to be in the right spot. The Knutson say it's been like that as long as they can remember. It did help Aquinas Holman head coach Tim Franzini put together a line able to upset a formidable on Alaska team their senior year back in 2009. And you and him kind of talk about how who did better in that game and stuff. Not, not cocky at all, but, you know, but just kind of a brotherly rivalry. It's a rivalry that hasn't let up now that they're on the other side of the action either. And if it's ever somebody's fault, it's always his fault. It's always my brother's fault. He'll say something as, as he's giving me the puck or something, you know, like a call or, you know, what were you doing out there, stuff like that, you know, kind of. We enjoy a tough time, but it's, it's a lot of fun, you know, just being on the ice, having a good time with them. They've also used that rivalry to help push their sister, Teresa. While Zach and James try to avoid putting on the stripes in game she's playing, the sophomore forward certainly isn't getting an advantage when they do. In youth games, we used to call a lot of penalties on her just because, you know, like we expect more from her. Not purposely penalize her, but sometimes we would, you know, be like, oh, what are you doing? And like we'd give her a penalty just to kind of try to encourage her almost, you know, but sometimes it's a, you know, a little brother civil, uh, sister rivalry kind of thing as well. Whatever it is, it's paid off. This season, Teresa's averaging 2.5 goals and an assist in each game she's played. You know, she just always plays hard and stuff, and that's uh, just really proud of her and what she's done, what she's accomplished, and what she will accomplish. Still, James adds there was something missing after he hung up his avalanche sweater for the last time. I never would have thought that, you know, uh, when I graduated high school and stuff, but now, now I don't really have hockey. You know, actually, I, I think I cherish wrestling a little bit more, and I actually really enjoy wrestling a little bit more. 
uh, just because of that fact that you get back on the ice. I personally would tell everybody who plays hockey should probably referee hockey because you get a, you get a completely better understanding of the game. You you know like what's going to happen. You you should like know what the referee is going to call. So you just just that advantage should help you in your future. And don't expect that to end anytime soon. I want to rough hockey till I'm old until. I have to you know, take my skates off my feet because I'm dead on the ice kind of thing. You know, I want to I be that guy. It's safe to say Zach might as well. For the WIAA State Network, I'm Dustin Lukey. All right, Dustin, thank you very much. Again, we are about halfway through the action here on Championship Saturday at halftime of this Division Three game right now. Let's take a look at what has really transpired earlier today, and then we'll take a look forward as well. First game off the bat was just one of the best that you'll ever see. If you haven't seen the highlights of this one, you'll certainly want to do so. Sheboygan Area Lutheran, thanks to a Sam Decker three-pointer with two seconds to go, gets it done over Racine Lutheran by a one-point bet. Decker had 12 points in the final 45 seconds of that game. The future Badger with 40 points in that Division V championship. A couple minutes after that, he was named Mr. Basketball as well. Just an amazing game. One point win for Sheboygan Area Lutheran over Racine Lutheran. After that, it was the Dominican win over Cuba City. Dominican just an outstanding team. They showed it all season long, and they get it done in Division IV over Cuba City, 61-43. to So they take home the gold ball. As you saw right now, brilliant right now over GET, 19-14. to We are at the half of that game in the Division III state championship. We're going to have a little break then, and then about 6.30 tonight, we'll be right back here at the Kohl Center. On Alaska in Division II, we'll take on Carcona. Both these teams have combined only three losses. And then in Division I, the big D1 matchup, that'll be about an 8-15 tip-off. Milwaukee King will take on Germantown, undefeated Germantown, who looked so impressive last night against defending D1 state champ Madison Memorial. Again, that'll be about an 8-15 tip-off between King and Germantown. Well, so many memories made here at the state championships, and if you want to get your copy, and to remember a lot of these, you can get DVD copies of all 2012 WIAA tournament games and other WIAA events by going online there to prepfilms.com. Please allow four to six weeks for delivery, about 30 bucks per copy, and then you get the shipping and handling as well, but certainly worth it. You want to get your hands on those DVD copies of all the WIAA memories, and again, so many memories may here at the Kohl Center and other venues around the state as we've gone through an exciting state tournament season. Well, we're just about set for the tip-off of the second half of action in this Division Three state championship. Let's send it back courtside to Scott Emmerich and John Nadelkoff. All right, Jake Day, thanks very much. It's brilliant leading GET here, 19 to 14 at the half. We're moments away from the start of the third quarter. Let's check out some of those first half highlights. First of all, on the GET side, not a lot going down the hoop for them, but Mitch Dorr hit a couple of early threes to get them going. Good pull speed, good recognition, kicking it out, touching the paint a different way. Tim Wagner making something happen himself. I'd like to see them do more of this, jump stop and recognizing what the defense gives them. Tough first half for Riley Bamanick. He picked up three fouls and made just one out of eight shots. One of them right there and almost got called for another foul. Against that ball pressure, you got to protect that ball, and he did, and he responded. On that. the other side, Brilliant. They had a good stretch there early on. Eric Kittle for three. He had a couple of them in that first half. Excellent inside-out action. Touching the paint, kicking it out versus the zone. Les Lessig also had a three for Brilliant. They were really cooking in the beginning of the game, moving the ball, reversing the ball, touching short corner. They led by as many as eight. And then Ryan Reinke along the baseline showing off his nice touch to give Brilliant the 19-14 lead here at the half. First half stats, neither team really lighting up. Both teams with 22 shot attempts. Brilliant hitting three more, and I guess that's the difference in this one with the five-point lead. And again, GT shooting a very low percentage, but still much into the game, to say the least. They got to take that idea that maybe, hey, we're there. Do a few little things around the bucket, touch the paint, recognize what's given to us, and attack it from there. Bamanick and Wagner, GT's top two scorers, combined three of 14 from the field. Dora with those th two three-pointers leads GT in scoring with six. Kittle with those two three-pointers has six as well. Very balanced as usual for Brilliant. That's what they do. I tell you, Brilliant just keeps coming at you, dares you to attack them one-on-one, -on -one, and then they go from there. But they're very patient. 
They don't turn the ball over very much, but most of all, I like their ball reversible against the zone. Well, we'll be back for the start of the third quarter right after this short timeout. A word from your local station. This is your WIAA Network Station. We are 16 minutes away from handing out the Division III Championship Trophy. Both these schools playing in their first ever WIAA State title games. In 1-3 extension with the lob. Beautiful play to start the third quarter. The lob to Reinke. Set play right out from the get-go. Lakey in the corner. Finds door. Door with the dribble penetration to Lakey. Nice driving kick. Long rebound, Johnson outfights two Lions for the board. Now in a bit of trouble, and a timeout for Mark Wagner right off the bat, 30-second timeout. Taken by GET. Here's another look at it there, John, right off the uh, opening possession. It's a set play, recognizing the pressure that they might bring at the beginning of the game, or beginning of the half. Nice execution. You get a look at uh, the Brilliant Lions and their head coach, Peter Kittle, who also serves as the football coach and the athletic director. That's a busy guy. It's a busy guy, but the students and the, his players get to see him in different lights and different roles and makes it a well-rounded program. He said he never has any conflicts between football and basketball seasons because his basketball players are his football players. He must so. have a great time manager. <laughs> Wagner in the corner. That one's short. Box out beautifully by Klessig. Getting the rebound. You know, always looking to the rim. Poised. Seeing what the defense presents. Good ball fakes. Trying to get the defense to lean. Klessig in the corner. Lakey on him. Now Reinke. High low. Van Thiel. Poked out of bounds and stolen by Babinick. Not sure who got a handle on it. But Babinick lost the grip on it on the far corner and he turns it over. Like Ryan Key's high post recognition. He's always squaring up when he catches it at the elbow, sees what the defense delivers. Again, brilliant. Keep looking to that short corner, high post. Really flattens out things. Here's a loose ball picked up by Dorr. GET on the run. There haven't been many fast breaks in this one. Babinick fires up a three. Johnson with another rebound. Now Wagner for three. Knocked out of bounds. And it goes over to Brilliant. A lot of bodies making contact. GT now just two out of ten on their three-point attempts. And I'd like to see him touch the paint, work from there, whether the ball goes up inside or not. Makes the defense make them more loyal, more truck. They have to handle both inside and out action. They tried that same play, Brilliant. This time, GT had it sniffed out. Now a nice pump fake and a three by Krasneski. Poked away. And knocked out of bound. No, saved by Kittle. But right to Lakey. Here comes GT. Thought that was going out of bounds about three different times. Johnson inside had it stripped away. And it'll stay with GET. Quick Bo hands by Krasneski. Both teams got quick hands on the rotation on both sets of deep. Chris Johnson, 16 points yesterday for GET against Marshall, has yet to score. Their post player. Getting that ball pressure, hawking, climbing into it, trying to take away tendencies. Wagner with a tough fadeaway. Babinick on the foul. 
Strike him around the paint. He has that mismatch around the paint. Back to a five-point lead for Brilliant. The Brilliant's had some opportunities to kind of extend that lead, but they haven't been able to take advantage. Here's a block by Johnson. They swing it around. Kittle, now back to Klesig. That's a three. Van Thiel comes out of there with it and stolen. Bamanek. Big possession here, Scott. See if they can cut it down. They haven't been inside five for a while. Oh, Klesig anticipated the move by Bamanek beautifully and came up with the steal and the timeout. 30-second timeout for Brilliant. They still lead by five at the 521 mark here in the third quarter. Just seems like Brilliant's ball pressure always keeps them in the play. If they don't get something to offense in, it's their anchor. It's something that they always bank on and they can count on. Let's take a look at the uh, Wisconsin map, find out where these Division Three schools are located. Gale Electric Trumpelow High School located oh, about 20 miles or so north of La Crosse on the far western part of the state. Brilliant on the far eastern part of the state. If you drew a line straight across the state, you'd run into <laughs> each other. I was going to say, it's pretty bad straight across. It is St. Patrick's Day. So. It is, yeah. yes. Where's your green? You know what, I've, I've been so wrapped up in the hoops, I forgot to wear my green today. <laughs> Yeah, both these teams struggling from the field, but GET even more. Him playing passing lanes more than ball. Little adjustment out of the timeout. Then you want some action on the weak side, high, low. You don't want to st be stagnant. Classic along the baseline, got it to go. Nice rise, nice jump shot, just a fundamental jump shot. Classic now has seven points, he leads, brilliant. Little pick and pop action with Wagner and Bominick. Mathiebe on Wagner, Wagner looking for some room, lost the handle, Mathiebe scoops it up. And a turnover for G.E.T. Did a nice job shading his left side. It's something Wagner likes to do. Offensive foul. That one's on Van Thiel. Love, love the counter back, taking the charge. Takes the momentum away a little bit. Excellent setup. Just the way you draw it up. Maybe a carryover to the next possession. Mitch Dorr may have banged his head on the floor as well. And more mop-up work down underneath the uh, Brilliant basket. And Brilliant extending the pressure a little bit. Another different look. Van Thiel, by the way, with three personal fouls. He's in a bit of foul trouble for Brilliant. Now Marcus Wynn checking in. The Norwegian exchange student replacing Lakey. See if he can get an open three-point look for the big guard him instead. That's Dorr for three. Couldn't get the roll, another one and done. Brilliant all over the boards. Do a great job, the guards are going after the boards. Again, playing passing lanes. Making them think, maybe throw a, a soft pass. Now Van Thiel lost the handle on the pass, and here comes G.E.T. again. Down seven. Babinick fires a three. Long rebound by Dorr. And touch that paint. See if he can make the defense play more trustworthy down low. They got to honor that. Right now, really relying on the three ball. Plessig comes in. He'll replace Van Thiel, who leaves with those three fouls. You didn't see Bamanek coming off one screen and then bringing Wagner off another out the bottom. Wagner got a great pick from Johnson, but he couldn't connect on the jumper. Here comes Brilliant. Kittle. Back out to Krasneski. They swing it around in the corner. Plessig with a wonderful pump fake. Now Kittle open for three. Battle for the rebound, and it'll go to GET basketball. The foul will be on Kittle. Excellent ball reversal. He swung quick, quick, no hitches. Just couldn't get it to fall. Falls on Brilliant's number two, Eric Kittle. That's his second, team second. 
Speaking about not getting it to fall, GET now shooting just 19% for the game. And with that idea, you're down seven. A lot of time left. A quarter and a half. I mean, but one thing to rectify, you got to get to the paint. Got to get to the free throw. Line. Get a second chance rebound. When things aren't falling initially, you got to find those counters. All you need is one guy to get hot, right, Coach? Mm -hmm. Correct. And we have as many turnovers in this game as we do field goals. Again, you got to give credit to Brilliant, though, how they play defense. Jim Johnson with a high pick and roll with a slip. Bit of a scoring foul here for GT. Now Johnson gets his first one-on-one -on -one opportunity in the paint. Spin move and a foul. That one's going to go against Reinke. That's his pad and move. Little peekaboo move over the right shoulder. Well, Johnson had 16 points and 16 boards against Marshall and was a crucial factor in the paint. But Brilliant has done a nice job today of limiting his touches, not just his shots. And Reinke plays very solid defense. He's got the advantage on him getting a step by on his right side. Missing them both. And GT just not able to capitalize. He's definitely lived right now, but they got to find a way to get a stop here, though. Don't let it affect your defense. Getting a little clock rotation. That turnover, Kittle couldn't handle the pass, and so Brillian hanging on to that seven-point lead with 2.31 to go in the third quarter. Here's a message from our statewide sponsors. This is your WIAA Network Station. It's game three of the Central League Soccer Tournament, and Dave, these kids are beat. And there's still one game left. I don't know how they're ever going to make it. Let's hope their coach has some inspiration before the next game. Want to know a secret? Research indicates that low-fat chocolate milk is better at rehydrating, helping muscles recover, and boosting energy than leading sports drinks. Wow, it's like a whole new team. What's their secret? It's pretty amazing, Bob. Got chocolate milk? Skywood Family Access has been a great tool for our family. They are able to stay on top of all their assignments and tests. I also find that having three kids in three different schools allows me to keep up with each child so much easier using the Skyward Family Access. The thing for me is that I can communicate with their teachers and they now give me progress reports every week about my kids and what they're doing. I mean, and I just think that's invaluable. Scott Emmerich and John Nadelkoff back at the Cole Center Division III Championship. Offense, points tough to come by here with Brilliant leading by seven. Again, you can't get your head down, you can't lose your poise, let it affect the other side of the game, the defense, and still well in it. But you gotta give credit where credit is due. Brilliant does what they've been doing all year, ball pressure, hawking the ball, climbing into you. Just gotta find other ways of scoring, like off the bounce, off the rebound, get to the free throw line. Get it from a different viewpoint. Well, Brilliant held Lodi to just 30 points yesterday in the semifinals. That was Lodi's lowest offensive output of the season. Now they try to backdoor cut, but Johnson got caught up in traffic, and it's a steal by the Lions. Excellent recognition on the help and recovery. Same time, Brilliant's got to keep attacking, keep probing. Don't keep the ball on one side of the floor so the defense doesn't have to move. Now they lob it down low and it's poked away, stolen by the Red Hawks. So Brilliant has had a lot of opportunities to extend this lead, and they're keeping GT in this one. The door is still open. Now Johnson. Nice close out. And a timeout by Mark Wagner. They were moments away from a five second call. 30 second timeout for Coach Wagner. It's a 30 Coach Wagner's just going to keep telling me, you got to keep rescreening, you got to keep cutting, but recognizing the overplays, especially on the ball. There's driving lines there, but they got to recognize they might not get it to the rim. They got to jump stop and learn to read the defense from there. This is a family affair for the uh, GET basketball team. Coach Wagner, of course, his son Tim is uh, one of the star guards. And his wife Nancy helps out run the GET youth program, and she's very involved with the GET youth program. and. Nancy also played a little bit at the University of Mary. Son 
Tim is on the varsity, of course, and they also have a very talented eighth grader coming up through the ranks, too. So the Wagner family, their imprint all over this GT <laughs> program. It's nice to have the wife right run the youth program. It's, it's, just a, it's a pretty good communication, so. Yeah, you can't argue about how, how it's getting done, right? We know who, the, who makes the calls. Yeah, yep, now we know who the boss is. <laughs> I'll tell you what, both teams ice cold. Babinick trying to get the lid off, and he does. GT just 2 out of 10 now here in the third quarter. Back to a five-point game, just like it was at the half. A little bit better release. Went straight up and straight down. Didn't lean back so much on his jumper. Krasneski in a bit of trouble. Finds Kittle. They're swinging around Krasneski. That's a three. And then a foul over the back, and that'll be called on Wagner. Then Brewing does a very good job at quick reversals, getting up aside, then attacking the glass. That's the first team foul on GT. Free throws coming for Mathibi. Mathibi's been a nice spark for Brilliant off the bench, averaging almost five points a game. He had seven yesterday against Lodak. Nice to have that sixth, seventh man, that steady Eddie, come and do the little things, but then you contribute points and rebounds. Settles for one out of two, and Bamanek skies for the rebound. Didn't run and jump at Bamanek. Good recognition. Wagner had it poked away, nearly stole, and then a reach-in foul on Krasneski. Five team fouls on the Lions. Good adjustment, good adjustment by by Coach Kittle running and jumping. He doesn't want Bamanek to get into a flow, get into a rhythm, and maybe go on a roll. Correction, just 14 fouls on Brilliant. Bamanek has like a 25-footer. He almost got it to go, and there's Kittle with yet another rebound. The five foot eight inch guard has five, six of them, I beg your pardon, today. He's controlling the glass pretty well. Again, a little one, three more ball pressure than playing the passing lanes now. Baseline jumper, Reinke. Battle for the rebound. No, but a foul. Free throws coming for Klesig. In two possessions in a row with the offensive putback attack in the rim has made the difference for Brilliance. Here's a look at Blake Plessig on the offensive glass, battling with Chris Johnson. Just grabbing it strong, going up strong, getting an extra shot. Plessig having a very well-balanced game. Eight points, seven boards. One out of two from the line, though. Glue, a glue-type guy. Guys does the little things. It all adds up in the end, the W's. Final seconds of the third quarter. The Red Hawks have it in the hands of Babinick. Little pick and pop, driving kick, try to ISO in the post. Wagner getting a pick, partially blocked on the jumper. Can they get it off? Krasinski, no. Krasinski had a chance from half court, but brilliant with their lockdown defense. Leads it by seven, entering the final quarter. Here's a message from your local station. This is your WIAA network station. Game summary is brought to you by Skyward, creator of Skyward School Management System and Skyward Family Access, the best solution for Wisconsin school districts and parents.
John, what stands out? I tell you, you said it best. It's cold shooting, but it has not affected defense in the end. In the sense of that they keep staying with it. If the offense doesn't happen, they've got to stay steadfast, work from that end and work from there. And again, if I'm talking about GET, don't get sped up. Don't be impatient. A lot of time left. Numerous possessions left. Brilliant leads it by seven. Their biggest lead of this game has been eight. Wagner with a floater. A good start for the fourth quarter for the Red Hawks. Pick and pop. Nice recognition by Bamanek of giving it up. Wagner finalizing the deal. Here's the lob. Overshoots. Lanky that time. A turnover for Brillian. Their 12th turnover of the game. That time the backside wing recognized it coming. Flooded the paint. Took it away. We talk about Brillian's defense, which has been so good. GET's defense has forced 12 turnovers. Again, another pick and pop. Trying to isolate the two best shooters on the court. Well, the energy starting to pick up a little bit here on both ends. Babinick with a long three. And the rebound comes off out of bounds. It'll stay with G.E.T. Grzneski simply lost the handle. Gorby running interference. Not running down the court. Saw a possible chance of getting a hand on the ball. And he did. Again, a little screen for the screener. Bringing Wagner out to the corner. Door pump fake the three. Now Wagner, a wide open look. His first one of the game. He's been like that all tournament. Maybe he's eating it up for the last quarter. Momentum, G-E-T. Timeout, brilliant. Here's another look at those last couple of possessions for the Red Hawks. Again, nice recognition by both players. When you catch one, make one, get another, make another. Well, Legner hasn't had a lot of open looks, but this was one of the rare ones. The team's best three-point shooter, 41% on the team. And when he shoots it, it's, it's a total lift, it's a total recognition, seeing the result with the shooting win. 7-2 run in the last 225. Now Coach Kittle just settling his, his players down, their experience, they've been very steady. They haven't had much... Uh, field goal success, but they got to keep touching the paint, keep doing what they've been doing, keep attacking the boards. Here's a three by Krzyzewski, and he answers. Ball touched the paint, good recognition on the reversal. His first three-pointer of the game after missing his first five. Now Bamanek in the lane. Dorr trying to respond. Air ball. Out of bounds, though, to GT. Here's yeah. another look at Krzyzewski. Yeah, and Coach Kittle saying, be patient, touch the paint, make the defense flatten out, and they respond with three. America's played to the corner. Wagner is short on that one. Thiel lost the handle and his feet, and now Brilliant has it. Krzyzewski on the run. Krzyzewski to the lane. Feeds Reinke, it's short. Johnson has the rebound. Excellent attack, just didn't get the finish. And Babinick dragged the pivot foot a little bit as he came to the jump stop. Turnover, GT. Nice job by the efficient in crew right on the spot, right on the, right on the call. <laughs> Substitution now, Mathibi back in the lineup for Brilliant. Reporting it for Brilliant, number 21, Jordan Mathibi. He'll replace Van Thiel. Again, brilliant to stay patient, but have a purpose with their attack. I like it when they touch the short corner and high post. Just seems it opens up the outside. Gets them also a second chance at the rim. Five point lead for Brilliant. Approaching the six minute mark in the fourth quarter of our Division Three Championship. They throw it inside, blocked by Wagner, out of bounds, it'll stay with Brilliant. Excellent recovery by Wagner on the weak side. Mathibi had an opening just for a moment. Didn't look for the lob, the slice sli slip to the middle. Krzyzewski, another three, got it! Same spot, same result. Trevor Krzyzewski has hit back-to-back -back threes, and just like that, it's gone from a two-point lead to an eight-point lead. Again, trying to ISO Wagner a little bit. 
A lot of time, touch that paint, cut off that paint. Johnson one on one inside. Ranky may have got a hand on it. Ranky does a nice job covering up, chesting up. It's brilliant. It's matched their biggest lead of the game, and now a foul on Johnson. Perhaps a little frustration there. Falls on number 42, Chris Johnson, his third in the team's third. In at a point of the game, maybe it could be a breaking point. Brilliant's weathered it. Circle, circle, Duke play. Chris Nesky. Oh my, he has just taken Whoa. over. Big plays, big players, and big games. The senior was down here two years ago when Brilliant made it to state, and now he's taken over. Marcus Wynn penetrating. Couldn't get it to go, and another rebound by Brilliant. Wynn hits the deck hard, along with Mathibi. Now Chris Nesky on the pump fake. Loose inside, out of bounds, G-E-T basketball. I like how Brilliant's attacking. Even though they could slow it up, they could be patient. I like the momentum, taking it right at it. Biggest lead of the game right now for Brilliant. On an 8-0 run. After GT had cut the lead down to two. Slow, shows true grit. Responding to a run, you come back with a run. All eight of those points have come courtesy of Trevor Krzyzneski. Again, Krzyzneski was a little, little cold yesterday. Found other ways to get his team involved. Now he's eating it up. Now Wagner to the lane, squeezed, and he'll get two free throws. He was sandwiched between Van Thiel and Reinke. We'll see who they whistle the foul on. It'll be on Reinke. Ian gets the clock stopped, get a couple free throws, slows the game down and get another possession. Might see some extra extension of the 1-3-1 by GT just to give a different look. I know there's plenty of time, but they might want to show a little different pressure scheme. And the two-time Cooley Conference Player of the Year will get another free throw, try to make it two out of two. Plus again, Van Thiel out. Getting off of, if they happen to make it, it's also coming off a dead ball. Make the free throw, get the setup in your defense in a different way. Two for two for Baminick. Remember, he picked up three early fouls and played much of the first half with three fouls. He still has just three fouls. Little diamond press, one and done type situation. Back to the 1-3-1. One, one. You'll see probably more ball pressure with time and possessions limited. Again, keep attacking up the side. Flatten out the D. Don't lose to what you've been doing. It's nice to have two, coach, two coaches' sons out there playing the one and two guard. Classic down low. The ball bounces off the head of Reinke. Now here comes GET. A chance to cut into that lead again. Babinick for three. Got it. Excellent answer. His first three pointer of the game after missing his first four. Pressing up on the 1-3-1. One, one. Under four minutes to go. Back to a five-point game. Red Hawks hanging around. They can get it up aside. Mathibi almost lost it out of bounds. Krzyzewski in the lane. Lost the handle. Kittle recovers. Good recognition. Now Klesik to Mathibi with a pump fake. Almost got it to go, but he'll get a couple of free throws. In the key... The Again, the key was jump stop and giving it up. Here's another look at Riley Babinick on the other end, getting the feed from Marcus Wynn. It's almost like a secondary break. Get the ball up to the corner, flatten out the D, get it back to the top and attack from the top on down. Here's Mathibi, the senior guard. 56% free throw shooter, excuse me. Two for two for the senior. Brilliant can play strong yet on the ball. Not in the bonus for GT yet. Babinick with another look at three. Dora climbs out of there with a rebound, battles four lines for it. Good, pa good patience. Could have went up and forced it, decided not to. Good decision. 
Marcus Wynn to the basket. Foul on Brilliant. That'll be on McPhoebe. 16 fouls now on Brilliant. So the next one will result in free throws. You want to touch the paint. Want to get it there. Stop the clock by getting to the foul line. Little screen and then bring Wagner off another screen to the corner off the outside. Johnson, one on one in the post. Lost the handle though. Now win for three. Rattles it home. That's his specialty. All the way from Norway, Marcus Wynn makes it a four-point game. And a timeout. We'll take one, too. Here's a message from our statewide sponsors. This is your WIAA Network Station. That was me. Actually, uh, that was me. And that's not like me. I used to be a football player. Uh, wrong century. I wanted to feel like that again, so I did something about it. I got back into shape. Now when I chase the bad guys, they do not get away. Yeah, I got them. Scott Emmerich and John Nadelkoff back at the Kohl Center here. Setting the stage for perhaps another dramatic finish in our championship Saturday. We had one earlier in case you missed it in Division 5. Sam Decker hitting a shot at the buzzer to give Sheboygan Lutheran their first ever state title. One of these two teams here in Division 3 will win their first ever state title. Like Deb Hauser says, five new title, five, two, five new title uh, teams coming our way. What a great way to do it. If I'm GET, Coach Wagner saying there's still a lot of time, don't have to get it in one possession. You're only two possessions down. Don't have to overextend. Still a long way to go with just under three minutes. Both these teams, a lot of experience, a lot of seniors. The one thing that GET does have, it's only got four fouls. It can pressure a little harder than normal. Brilliant, keep attacking. Keep getting it up the side. But it's too successful otherwise. When you look at that graphic, both teams have had their runs here in the fourth quarter. Then as you can see, the middle of the 1-3-1 is way out. Really lifted out of the post. Red Hawks extending their pressure. Blake Lara, where's number three? He's into the lineup now for GET. Here's a reach in and a steal. Faminick to Lara. Lara has it stolen back. Mathibi getting back on defense. He's made some nice plays this third and fourth quarter. And a foul. That one's going to be on Lara. Just the 15 foul for GT. Lara, that's his first team step. Johnson replaces Lara. Reporting it. Again, the pressure by GT on Brilliant. Really pressing up. Really trying to take away that initial pass to the middle or up a side. Brewing's got to keep punching gaps. They're overextended. You've got to make them pay. Get a little pressure release up the sideline. Brzezneski to Kittle. They play with it out top. Under two minutes to go in our Division Three championship. They lob it in. Lanky with a pump fake. Got it. Nice recognition, nice catch, and the results of a two. Fabinek pulling up from 16. Timeout GET, back to a four-point ball game with a minute 39 to go. Quick and efficient, no hesitation on the transition. We'll take a timeout too, as you can look at Ryan Reinke. Here's a message from our statewide sponsors. This is your WIAA Network Station. Okay, Edith, you are all set with the Packers checking account. Thank you. And we have a special gift for you. Oh? <gasps> Hello, Edith. Want more Aaron Rodgers in your life? Oh, my. Is that part of the deal? Oh. Get exclusive Packers checks featuring Aaron when you open a Packers checking account. For details, go to your nearest branch or visit us online. So do you play Canasta? All the time. I love that game. Brilliant by four with a minute 39 to go here in our Division Three title game. 
been a very physical affair, hasn't it, John? I tell you, 50-50 balls have kind of balanced out a little bit. A lot of guys on the floor are banging, but they know there's only a little bit of time left. they got to give, get, get, get it at them all, and they have all game long. There's going to be a few dents left on this floor by the time the Badgers <laughs> come back from New Mexico. I tell you, uh, it's so much fun to watch the sweat, the hard work coming down the last minute and a half. It's anybody's game. Timeouts, GT has none. Brilliant with three. And the possession arrow belongs to Brilliant as well. GT extending the pressure now. Can be aggressive. They got one more foul before the bonus. Brilliant trying to get them in a good spot. Kittle in a tough spot right now. And a quick timeout by Kittle. Great recognition by Coach Kittle. He saw him in the worst spot he could right past half court. Great play by the bench. Full timeout here as well for Brillian. So they got it across to half court. And with a minute 30 to go, Brillian leading this one by four. Again, Coach Kittle just recognizing that they're in a bad situation. They have three timeouts. That's why you keep them as long as you do at times. And they were used efficiently. He's telling his kids here down the line, you got two timeouts, you get in trouble again. You got things that can bail you out. Defensive have ruled the day so far here in a Division III title game. In fact, GET, a team that averages 68 points a game, their season low coming into this one was 49. That came against Austin, Minnesota. They're going to have a tough time reaching that in the final minute 30 unless they get a couple OTs or something. And again, credit to Brilliant, but at the same time, GET doing a nice job holding down Brilliant. We saw what Brilliant can do, how efficient they were yesterday. Today, GT slowed them down, especially as the last couple quarters have gone on. Roughly one-third of the Division Three state title games have been decided by five points or less. We're on that pace right now. Very balanced scoring for Brilliant. Krasneski with 10. He had eight all by himself during an 8-0 run for the Lions earlier this quarter. Klesig with eight. Reinke with eight. For GET, Riley Bamanek leads them with 15. Tim Wagner with nine. Gonna see a high trap. They can take advantage of that. Stolen, almost poked away. Or nearly stolen, I should say. Now Kittle has it. And a foul. Win fouls Kittle. Not a bad foul, had a foul to give. Plus he had the advantage on the turn. Team sixth for GET. So now both teams, every foul from here on out in the bonus. You have the opportunity to be strategic of who you may want to foul here because there's still plenty of time. Kittle in trouble again. Kittle finds Ranky underneath. Blocked by Wynn, but a foul. I beg your pardon, that was Mathibi. Great recognition by Kittle. Looking up the floor, didn't look side to side. Again, had him all, had him all coffined up, but found a way to get it up the side. Gonna get two throws. Jordan Mathibi. Mathibi's done a good job the last quarter and half. He's done a couple 50-50 balls. He countered back with a turnover after a turnover previously. And five out of six from the free throw line, too. Some clutch free throws. If Brilliant's going to win this state title, we're going to have to clinch it from the free throw line. Again, yeah, maybe a quick strike. Bambinick off the mark. Out of bounds. Brilliant battling for that rebound. Lost the grip. GT basketball. And GT looking to get two quick looks. One for Bamanek, and then maybe Wagner to the corner or to the weak side corner. Bamanek tries the baseline. Couldn't get it to go. Johnson comes soaring in. Win. Now Wagner on a reach in foul on Kittle. Again, advantage for GT. The clock stops. They have no timeouts, but the clock stops. Gives them a chance to set up in the press. And a couple of free throws for Tim Wagner. Now it is a one-on-one -on -one situation. Wagner, an outstanding free throw shooter, 85% on the season. Then young guys, young girls watching this, how he follows through, it's the same way every time. That shooting hand sees the result, reaching into the jump. Two out of two for Wagner, the junior. Little diamond press, get a quick track. Four-point game, 48 seconds down low, and missing the dunk is Johnson. 
or Johnson gets whistled for the foul, I should say, but Reinke missing the dunk. Fouls on GE Tennis number 42. Here's another look at it. Yeah, good recognition by Kittle up the court again, just like the previous possession, breaking the pressure. Johnson backed off at the last minute. They whistled him for the foul. Five fouls now on Chris Johnson, so he'll need to be replaced. Blake Lara checks in for him, so Chris Johnson, the senior, sees his career come to an end. It'll be up to his teammates to see if they can bring the Red Hawks back. Johnson scoreless today after scoring 16 yesterday. About three possessions each way with 45 seconds left. Plenty of time. There's three, you're gonna have the ball at least probably three more times. You don't have to come down too quick. Take what's best for you, whether it's a three or an inside the paint two. Five point game. 40 seconds to go. Bamanek, a step back three, strong. Lessig tracks down the rebound. Kuzneski and a foul by Lara. And to the free throw line will go Brilliant with a chance to clinch the Division Three state title. Again, we've seen Bamanek do that earlier in the game where he created a little space and knocked that down. Actually right on line, hits the back of the rim. Couldn't get it to go, now Bamanek, 30 seconds. Might see a drag screen to the top. Wagner with Mephibi on him. Good recognition. Bamanek has a look. Win battling for the rebound. So is Brilliant, saved to Bamanek. Poked away by Klesig. Now Lara, 10 seconds to go. And a foul on Brilliant. Excellent hustle by Lara. He's created a couple 50-50 balls to give him an extra shot. What an exchange down there. Check out the action underneath. Then last possessions, you got to bring it the most. Lake Lara shooting one and one. Lake Lara at the line, a bonus situation. Big free throws here. Frankie comes away with the rebound. Up ahead to Krasneski. Final seconds ticking off and a foul on Lara. And Brilliant is going to win the Division Three State Championship. Again, a lot of flurries on both sides. Like you said, Scott, a lot of possibilities for the door to be open or to be closed. And it really looks like it's going to close the door now. Two, foul, uh, two shots, I should say, for Trevor Krasneski. And how appropriate it's Krasneski at the free throw line to finish it off. It was his personal 8-0 run earlier in the fourth quarter that turned a two-point game back into a 10-point game and gave Brilliant the cushion they needed here down the stretch. Found his rhythm, found that spot in the floor and fell in love with it. Mass substitutions for both sides now to try to get everybody here. Hunter Evenson in for GET, so is Eston Jostad. Brandon Domney in the lineup for GET. Mitch Schur replaces Riley Bamanek. He'll get a terrific ovation. Four Brillian. Zach Dietrich in the lineup. Tanner Banky. Bob Hussey. And Matt Lorenz, final seconds of the Division Three state title game. Brilliant wins their first ever state championship. Just a credit to Brilliant how they play man-to-man -man defense, but at the same time, GT's done a wonderful job. Well, the Brilliant Lions capture the Division Three championship. We'll be back to hand out some trophies and hear from the winning coach and players as well. Stay with us. A message from your local station. This is your WIAA Network Station. Reminder to the fans, we'd like you to please remain for the 
The Brilliant Lions have defeated the Gale Electric Tremplo Red Hawks in our Division Three title game, 40 to 35. Let's hand out the trophies. Send it over to our PA announcer, Rick Torgerson. The WIAA Board of Control invites you to participate in the awards ceremony for these two fine teams that have just completed their tournament competition. Making the presentation will be Mike Bigley, District Administrator at Whitehall. Dean Sanders, District Administrator at Lake Mills, and Mark Gobler, Principal of Luck High School and also President of the Board of Control. They will be assisted by WIAA Assistant Director Tom Shafransky. First of all, for Gail Ettrick Trempolo, would each player come forward as your name is read to receive your individual medal? Number one, Tim Wagner. Number two, Trent Von Drossick. Number three, Blake Lara. Number five, Riley Bambinick. Number 11, Mitch Dorr. Number 12, Eric Van Vliet. Number 14, Eston Jostad. Number 21, Hunter Evenson. Number 22, Kevin Lakey. Number 23, Marcus Wynn. Number 32, Brandon Domney. Number 42, Chris Johnson. Number 44, Mitch Schur. And number 51, Chandler Lamke. And now would Coach Mark Wagner please step forward to receive the team trophy. I do have one other announcement for Gail Etri Trempolo. Tomorrow they will be holding a welcome back pep assembly at the high school at 12 noon. That's tomorrow. Congratulations to the Gail Etri Trempolo Red Hawks. And now for the Brilliant Lions. Will each player step forward when your name is called to receive your individual medal? Number two, Eric Kittle. Number four, Tyler Ope. Number 15, Tyler Kurth. Number 20, Trevor Krzneski. Number 21, 
Jordan Mathebe. Number 23, Bailey Krieger. Number 24, Bob Hussey. Thank you, sir. Number 25, Jordan Metzo. Thank you. Number 30, Zach Dietrich. Number 32, Jared Orth. Number 33, Blake Plessig. Number 34, Tanner Benke. Number 41, Ryan Reinke. Number 41, Matt Lorenz. And number 45, Mike Van Thiel. And now with head coach Peter Kittle, please step forward to receive your team trophy. And I have one more announcement for Brilliant as well. They will have a welcome home at 11.30 tomorrow. There you get a look at the state champs, the Brilliant Lions. First time ever. Time now for the Wisconsin Corn Growers Play the Game. Brought to you by the Wisconsin Corn Growers Association. Working hard to provide food and fuel to America. And nobody came up bigger in that fourth quarter than Trevor Krasneski. Our Play of the Game. Wisconsin's corn growers know how to grow lots of corn. Some goes to feed a hungry world. Some goes to feed our livestock industry. And some goes into ethanol production. And that's saving you money at the pump. In fact, studies show that it would cost you an average 90 cents more per gallon to fill up if we didn't have ethanol in the marketplace. With ever-increasing yields per acre, Wisconsin's corn growers are meeting the demand for food, feed, and fuel. And that's good for all of us. Scott Emmerich and John Nadelkoff back at the Cole Center Division Three Championship. Brilliant has just beaten GET 40 to 35, and really they were it was played at their pace and their tempo. And they played to their strength. They played to that ball pressure defense, and even when GT made that nice run, cut it to two. Championship teams counter back, and they counter back with that 8-0 run. Let's take a look at some of those second half highlights. First of all, for GET, we mentioned they fell behind by 10 at one point and made a big, furious comeback. Tim Wagner hitting a three there. He got on a little bit of a hot streak to get him back to two. Riley Bambinick on the receiving end of this pass from Marcus Wynn for three. Nice recognition on the trail. That's when they sort of had momentum. And then a three for Marcus Wynn right there. That was a big three for a guy coming off the bench, making him play for the team. But when the pressure started to cook a little bit, that's when Brilliant cranked it up. Then recognizing the overextended defense, set play out of the half tank. The lob to Reinke. Nice fundamental play, touch the paint, reverse the ball out of the paint. Brzezneski for three. He had an 8-0 run all by himself in the fourth quarter to turn a two-point game into a 10-point game. And the lob here to Reinke. Again, Kittle also made some nice plays getting the ball up the opposite side, getting the two points to the free throw. And the Lions celebrating their first ever state title and standing by the winning head coach. And that is Pete Kittle. Thank you, Scott. I also have players Trevor Krasneski and Blake Klesnick. Blake, let's start with you. Talk about your team's commitment to defense. Oh, uh, We work all year long on defense, and that's really the thing we can hang our hat, hat to. Um, in practice, that's all we work on is just playing great defense and working together, playing team defense. And that's what got us this far, and that's what brought it home today. You guys were here two years ago, Trevor Krasneski. It seemed like in that fourth quarter, you played like you belonged here. You hit some big shots in that stretch when those guys were making runs. Yeah, uh, we didn't hit shots. I didn't hit shots early, but my teammates played great early, which helped a lot. And then uh, luckily I could step up for them towards the end, and uh, I owe it all to them. I mean, I love our guys. So, Pete Kittle, talk about the defensive game plan. GET comes into this tournament averaging some 70 points per game. You hold them to half that. Well, our kids do a great job in believing what we do. They are an awesome team. Um, 
GT had, you know, three really strong weapons. And then I thought today they showed that their team balance. They had a couple other guys hit some threes that we kind of thought we'd help off of. But our kids did really do a great job defending as a team, and they believe in each other. And uh, it isn't always pretty, but they play hard. You won some state titles as a football coach. How does basketball compare? There's nothing to compare to this feeling. You know, the opportunity for kids to get to experience this in whatever sport or just your entire community to be here and share in it, uh, it it's just awesome. I'm really happy for our kids, our community, and our school. Gentlemen, thanks for your time. Go enjoy this. Thank you. Scott, John, back to you. All right, Bob, thanks very much. And we still have more to come here on Championship Saturday. We're coming right back here to the Cole Center at 6.30 for Kokona and Onalaska in our Division II title game. And then tonight, a much-anticipated game as well. In Division I, it's Milwaukee King against Germantown. For John Nadelkoff, I'm Scott Emmerich. Let's send it upstairs. Jake Zimmerman standing by. Okay, guys, thanks very much. Yes, it has been an exciting afternoon of championship Saturday action here at the Kohl Center. Let's show you exactly what has gone down here. It started off with an absolute bang. Sheboygan area Lutheran over Racine Lutheran, 67-66. to 66. 